Good afternoon, friends and neighbors. This is Professor Bruce Hartfence from RIT's networking department. We are working through Chapter 8 in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols, and this is Part 5 of the IP version 6 series. And as promised, we're going to be doing EUI 64 conversions today. I apologize, this video is coming out a little later than I normally expected, but we had a storm last week, and we're in week 10 here. But enough of that, off to EUI conversions. Well, why are we talking about this particular conversion? We've talked about a lot of IP version 6 packets thus far. We built our topology and worked through a lot of the different kinds of addressing that we've seen. And uh, we're dealing with a lot of link local addresses. That is, those that begin with FE80. And if we look carefully at these link local addresses, or link local unicast messages, we can see that uh, we have a lot of different kinds, or a lot of different variations on a theme. We know that some of them are tied directly to MAC addresses, and we know that some of them are temporary, and we know that they're dynamically generated somehow. So here is an example of an IP version 6 neighbor solicitation, and we can see that this particular packet is a standard uh, IP version 6 link local unicast. And if we take a look at the last portion of the IP version 6 address, we see that it is based, or it looks like it's based, on the MAC address. And that's absolutely true for a lot of these. But if we take a look at some of the other ones, we see something a little funny going on. We see that they look like they're based on the MAC address, but then a couple of bytes in, we see this weird sort of character, this FFFE sort of characters. And then if we look a little closer at some of the conversations, as we can see in the bottom of this screen here, it turns out there's an awful lot of this stuff going on. And that is the EUI64, or what we call the modified EUI64 format. All right, so let's take a second here to talk a little bit about interface identifiers. We know that in IP version 6 land, nodes can have many interfaces and many different addresses associated with those interfaces. But there are a couple of rules. Interface identifiers are supposed to be unique in a subnet. That's why sometimes we see the dynamic generation of temporary addresses. And the interface IDs are 64 bits long. And as we've seen in some of the traffic, a lot of times they're based on the MAC address. But they may also be based on this modified EUI64 format. It turns out it's also based in part on the MAC address, but there's a twist to it. So in an IP version 6 address, a big chunk of the address, 64 bits worth, is based on the network, and 64 bits is based on MAC address, the EUI64, and in some cases even IP version 4 addresses are thrown in there, although that's not what we're talking about now. And remember, of course, that some of these were temporary addresses. So traffic coming from a particular node can use several different addresses uh, when you look at the traffic on the network. And that's one, one of the things that makes IP version 6 such a pain to track on a network. All right, so let's do a little bit of a conversion here. Uh, before we do, there are a couple of things to remember here. One is that in the first couple of bits of this conversion, there's something called the universal or group bit. And this gives us our idea of scope. Remember that in IP version 6 address, uh, a lot of times we talk about this idea of scope, which is how far this address can reach or how far someone can communicate using this particular address. Another little detail here is that we're going to take that FFFE characters I mentioned earlier, those hex characters, and we are going to insert them after the first three octets of the MAC address. All right, and this is going to be the basis for our, um, for our IP version 6 address. And then what we're going to do is suppress the leading zeros and add the type of MAC address, or the type of IP version 6 address that is. In this case, we've been talking about the link locals. So this is the example that we're going to do. The MAC address here is 000F, 
9000-3240. And you can see that the IP version 6 address for this particular packet looks very similar. But the hint that we have going forward is that right in the middle of the interface identifier, that is the right hand 64 bits of this, we see that FFFE has been inserted. But there are some rules. So let's, let's actually do the conversion. Here we go. So starting off with our MAC address, we are going to go ahead and insert that FFFE right after the first three octets of the MAC address shown here in red. Now what we're going to do is take that very first byte, or the very first octet, we're going to convert that to binary, and then what we're going to do is convert the um, universal or group bits based on the scope for this particular address. Well, this one has local scope, and so we're going to, we're going to convert the bits as you see there, converting the universal, uh, the universal bit to a 1. And then what we're going to do is convert that back. So if you, it turns out that if you flip that bit, that first octet changes from 00, 0 to 0, 02. Now what we'll do is we'll add the link local address out front there. And all of those zeros are inserted here because I just wanted to show you where all of these 64 bits for the network side come from. So there's a lot of zeros there. We can see that there's nine in a row there. And we can suppress all of those. So suppressing all of those and adding that double colon that I mentioned uh, one or two videos ago, we get the address that you see at the bottom. FE80 indicating link local, colon, colon, 20F90FF, FE003240. And let's see how we did. Well, we started off with this particular MAC address, went through that conversion, and we wind up with the IP version 6 link local address with an interface identifier based on the EUI 64 format. Now as we've been talking about through these casts, sometimes we use a non-converted address, and sometimes we do. So go back through the cast and take a look at some of the captures or take a look at captures on your own networks to help you determine when those are being converted. But most of these, in this case, were from the host when they were doing uh, neighbor discovery process. And that's something that we actually haven't talked about too much. That's an ICMP version 6 sort of topic, and we may get to that later on. Well, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for stopping by. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do next. We do have that ICMP version 6 sort of hanging out there. But as many of you may know, I just completed my third book for O'Reilly. It's based on voice over IP, and so I'm probably going to be adding some content for VoIP. So if you're jazzed about voice over IP and those protocols and how all that stuff works, you can keep an eye on the skies here. And remember to go out to BruceHartFence.com because what I'm doing nowadays is adding the captures that I use for the books and for these videos right to the website. So you can pull those down and of course keep an idea or keep an eye out for videos here. Remember that the two other books from O'Reilly are the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocol. That's what we've been working through here and the packet guide to routing and switching. Well, again, thanks very much for watching, thanks very much for listening, and may your packets always reach their destinations.